program on the altar of power to get wealth and particularly the Sunday ton the tonic that have been a blessing to you. We are happy that you're there listening. We are here because you're there. And because you're there, we will always try to present the word of God undiluted to you. Today we have a topic that is very interesting, particularly to the layman, and many of us are. Therefore, be ready to hear this message that is sent to you by God Almighty himself. Be ready to call your friends and relations who are around to join in this discussion this morning. But before then, let us pray and commit the session to the hand of God. Our Father and our God, again this morning we have come. I make myself available. I present my vocal cavity, my mannerism, my gesticulation to you that you may anoint it and cause it to impact on lives that we watch immediately now and those that may watch in different media that it will be presented to that will benefit from being in your presence today and thereafter every other person who watches will also benefit once more i return all glory to you take all glory in jesus christ's name we have prayed amen again once more i want to appreciate you for you are the reason why we are here indeed if nobody is there watching us listening to us every sunday we will have no business coming here to preach having said that i am led this morning actually i am led and you know i don't use words that way i am led to discuss very important topic i had wondered and wondered and the lord led me to discuss it i had wondered why is it that some men of god even though they bless others outside their domain outside their household in their domain in their household they seem not to be recognized that they carry power of god it's been a concern to me and the lord led me to discuss it to, today with you under a topic that talks about honoring the servant of god honoring the servant of god now we read some scriptures and i use them to explain to you like I said, I am led to discuss this topic because a lot of people are deprived out there. They have a man of God God has sent to them. And that man of God had been a blessing. But the man, other people under, are not benefiting from that same blessing. What could be the reason? You'll find out now what the reason is. I want to read first from an Old Testament scripture. I read two other scriptures from the New Testament and I'll be able to explain thereafter everything about it. Please follow me to Numbers chapter 12, verse 2 to 5. I can tell the rest of the story and I believe you will know it. Let me read. And they said, Had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses, had he not spoken also by us? And the Lord had it. Now, when the man Moses was very meek, now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the three came out, and the Lord came down on the pillars of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they had both fought with him, will I speak mouth to mouth. Now, he's talking about his servant Moses, even apparently are not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall be behold. Wherefore, when ye were not afraid to speak against my servant Moses, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed, and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous white as snow and Aaron looked upon Miriam and behold she was leprous and Aaron said unto Moses alas my lord I beseech thee lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned let her not be as dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb and Moses cried unto the Lord saying hear her now O Lord I beseech thee, the Lord said unto Moses, 
if her father had spit in his in her face should she not be ashamed seven days let her be shot shut out from the camp seven days and after that let her be received again and Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again praise the Lord I'm using this scripture as number one but there are so many other scriptures but let me give you the background to the story Miriam was Moses elder brother Aaron was also Moses elder brother from the same father the same mother Miriam actually was Moses baby nurse he took she personally took care of Moses if you remember when Pharaoh's daughter took Moses from the cradle in the river by the riverside in the Nile the young woman that was kept by the side to wait on Moses from a distance the same young woman who ran to Moses um, Pharaoh's daughter and demanded to bring person to nurse was Miriam eventually Miriam nursed Moses and Aaron was his senior brother I'm coming from that angle because it seems to me that that is the most difficult angle to come from you knew him a few things you know about him your junior brother whom you could beat maybe you have beaten him a couple of times a junior brother whom you dash something because seniors will always have more to give to juniors a senior a junior brother who respects you as a senior but you fail to understand that he carries the anointing of God and God looked upon you and looked upon him and made him your head a junior brother whom you bathed took care of like a baby and you were instrumental to whatever he is it is very difficult for you to give him his due respect except you have have the wisdom of God in you that was the case with Moses and Aaron and Miriam while in the wilderness going to the promised land there were a lot of rebellion against Moses some say this Moses has brought us here to die Miriam joined them in one of such occasions and the gossip was very simple because of this his Ethiopian wife does he even think that God does not speak to us he only speaks to him and when they finished the Lord came down in anger and enveloped the place called them out separately and when the Lord departed in the cloud all of a sudden Miriam became white as snow he had she had become leprous you know what I love most about that discussion Aaron knew who to talk to Aaron didn't waste time going to God to say God please heal after all we are all servants of God I can go to God he went straight to Moses and said Moses please show mercy show mercy and Moses also caught it immediately and showed mercy but the truth is the man of God was disrespected was not honored was unnecessarily gossiped about and God came down to defend his servant that is part of the matter but let me read you a scripture a New Testament scripture Matthew 13 54 to 58 and when he was come into his own country he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said hence had this man this wisdom and these mighty works is not this the carpenter's son is not his mother called Mary and his brother James and Joseph and Simeon and Judas and his sister are they not all with us <coughs> excuse me hence then had this man all these things and they were offended in him but Jesus said unto them a prophet is not with, without honor except save in his home country and his own house and he did many mighty works there sorry and he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief <coughs> thank you now this is the man Jesus this is the son of God the Bible gave account of in his own town where everybody knew him they were interested in saying is he not Joseph's son the carpenter is he not Mary's son are the brothers not here with us are the sisters 
So where did he get all this power from? While they were busy arguing about the man and the power and bringing him down in their mind, thinking they knew him all, he was busy healing the sick outside his home country. They will hear that Jesus had raised the dead in Judea. But right in Bethlehem, his power was not moving. Reason was that they didn't believe in him. Now, I have given you two points that you must do if you must benefit from the ministry of a man of God. Number one, do not join gossip against a man of God. Moses, his family joined gossip against him and everyone that gossiped against him had the other side, the reverse side of God's tongue. If you remember also the case of the serpent that was lifted up in the, in the wilderness, it was after gossip. Gossip against God and his servant. And God allowed fairy serpents in the camp. And they came and brought down the number, good number of young men and people who were gossiping. God delights in defending his servants. By the way, you may think I'm a pastor. I'm not a pastor. I'm a layman. I'm a businessman. So I'm not talking that you may respect me. I'm talking from my wealth of experience. By the special grace of God, I've been a child of God for upward of 30 years. And I'm speaking from the depth of this experience. Not because I want you to respect me. No. I'm saying I have benefited from the ministries of men of God. And the ones that have blessed me most are the people I honor. You must learn how to honor the men of God. Jesus said, A prophet is with honor except in his homeland. And the account of it, the one that touched me, was that he didn't do much of mighty miracle in his town. Reason? Because they didn't believe in him. Do yourself a favor. Do not waste your time on that any man, any man of God. Because if you do not respect him, you will not benefit from his ministry. I repeat myself. If that pastor of yours, you have not learned how to respect him. Not because he's him, but because he occupies a position that God has allowed him to. The Bible says no one take this honor by himself. That is a child of God, that is a servant of God, and he is put above you. Learn how to honor him if you must benefit from his ministry. And I'm speaking from experience. My experience is not short. I may not be the oldest Christian, but I have seen men of God by the special grace of God. I have been pastored by many. By the way, what are they called? Another word for the man of God is under shepherd. The chief shepherd himself is Jesus Christ. Every pastor is said to be an under shepherd. I want you to imagine that you are a sheep under a shepherd, I'm calling him an under shepherd. And he is saying, A, you are saying B. You will not hear him. You will not listen to him. When he says move, you're going your own direction. My dear, you will soon be devoured by wild animals. Because part of the work of a shepherd is to protect the sheep from wild animals. Part of the work of a shepherd is to take the sheep to steal waters. Part of the work of a shepherd is to take sheep to greener pastures, where the pasture is green. In the actual sense, his entire life depends on the sheep. I'm not talking about pastors that are not worthy to be pastors. I'm talking about pastors that are pastors indeed. Their life is revolving around their, 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 their sheep, which is the, the church. That's why you cannot afford to, to, to dishonor them. You know, familiarity breeds contempt. Familiarity, and I repeat it, breeds contempt. You know him. Maybe you knew him. It's possible you have trained him in Bible school. Please do yourself a favor. Respect him even though you knew him from when he was a child. The case of Miriam, you saw what happened to them. And Jesus giving example. He says, a prophet is with honor, except in his homeland. So what must we do to benefit from the man of God's ministry? Number one, reverence the man of God. Honor him in words. If there is a respect to be given, reverence, sir. In my native language, we say naiku. Whatever language you use that is a mark of honor to the man of God, please use. Reverence him in words and in deed. Number two, honor him with your substance. Honor him with your substance. And I would like to read a scripture for you to buttress that. Matthew 10, 41 to 42. 
He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give a drink, give to drink unto one of these little ones, a cup of water, only in the name of a disciple. Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. That scripture tells me that when you give cold water to a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. So the man of God sent to you to be your under shepherd, you need to bless him with material things while he blesses you with spiritual things. It does not matter whether he has, because oftentimes you look at some of them, they may look that, like they have money. But I have come to know that little things that are done to you who have money matter more to you. It may be difficult for you to look at him and then you see him, maybe he's driving three cars and he lives in a duplex. And you have an idea of how much he earns per month. And you think, it's enough for him. You are rather shooting yourself on the leg. Give him that little thing that you have. So that you can receive the prophet's reward. Don't ever think he has enough. Think of what you give him to bless him. They get blessed too. Oh yes, I know. I will not forget a man of God I bought a suit for. Whenever I see him with that suit, I'm happy that he's wearing it. And he never fails to appreciate it. That's, if I was looking at him, I know he had many suits. I would, I, would, I, would, I would deny myself of the benefit of Prophet's reward. So you must honor him in word. You must honor him in substance. Believe in his God-given abilities. I'll share this story with you. And it's a true story. This man of God is very charismatic that's to say he preaches with power by the, his ministry a lot of barren women have gotten children by his ministry people have been healed breakthroughs have happened and he is also blessed with word of knowledge and oftentimes he tells you what the Lord says about you and it comes to pass but he didn't have a child all of a sudden in the house he didn't have a child and people will be wondering, particularly those that don't understand the scripture. Why is it really true that this man of God, who people say he prays for you and you have a child, does not have a child? No, now it must be fake. That's the kind of gossip going around him. What they didn't remember, what they didn't know, what they didn't forget, what they forgot was the fact that the power is not his. It is the owner of the power that determines the direction of the power. Of course, if the power were his, he would have first given to his wife and have peace in the house. But the power was not his. His was to pray. But there is one who has the power who must bless. And if he doesn't bless, forget it. You, he cannot do miracle. Now, this man of God was not happy like he, you don't expect him to. But the person that was not really happy was the wife. <coughs> if, if you deal with women, I think there are three classes of women who are very vulnerable. Woman number one, woman approaching 40 and have not married. That one is ready to do anything to get a husband, particularly if she's well to do. These are the ones that could be swindled by the so-called prophets. Number two is a woman who is married and years have passed and doesn't have a child. That one is very, very vulnerable. There is nothing you tell her to do that she will not do. The Bible will give an account somewhere in the Bible. And it says she had seen so many things in the hand of doctors. Uh, if there is nothing, and I mean there is nothing. Because to them, it's like a reproach. And whenever you meet such people, they need your prayers, they need your everything. The wife of the pastor was troubled. In one occasion, they went for a program. And the man was introduced and testimonies were coming of all that he has prayed and everything that was happening. The woman stormed out of the program, cried out literally and stormed out. When she walked out, everybody noticed that she was crying when she was going away. The man of God managed to finish his program. And when he finished, he had to go home. When he got home, he was worried to get into the house. He, first of all, is she safe? What could have happened to, to her? And the wife now dressed in 
an outgoing dress, not house dress that she was supposed to be on. And then brought his food for him to eat. The man said to him, darling, what's happening? Why are you dressed this way? Are you going out? But this is not the plate you used to serve me food. Why are you serving me with this plate? The lady wouldn't talk. And she passed the food and knelt down, which she had not done before, and put the plate in front of him and told him to eat, sir, using sir for the husband, which she never used before. The man couldn't understand or comprehend what was going on. And the man couldn't even eat the food. The man didn't know what to do. Prompting the lady because all of a sudden the man had lost appetite. This is not the wife I know. Wearing out in dress. Serving me with a plate that is not my rear plate. And calling me sir. Eventually the man, the lady opened up and said, I think I have not received from you. Because of familiarity, I want to look like a, a stranger and see whether the Lord will bless me through you. Maybe because we sleep together, because we bath together, because we eat together, because we talk together, because sometimes I abuse you as my husband. I have not received. But I have decided to treat you with honor that you deserve, not as my husband. That's why I have come this way. The man himself broke down and prayed fervently for the wife. It did not take two months from that prayer, and the lady received. A prophet is with honor except in his homeland. That woman didn't receive all this period simply because he's not my husband. This one that I can even curse and he will not say a word. Even if I slap him, he will not slap back. Where is the power? And the power that he has is being used outside to bless people outside simply because he didn't give the man of God his honor. Learn how to honor the man of God if you must benefit from his ministry. If you don't do that, you will not. You are incapacitated by the fact that you don't give him the honor. If Almighty Jesus could not do much miracle in his hometown because they didn't believe in him, who are you? That's the account of the Bible. That's what the Bible says. He didn't do mighty miracles in his hometown because they didn't believe in him. My, 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 my advice to you this morning is that if you must benefit from the ministry of a man of God, learn how to, manna, um, um, my, uh, how, how to honor a man of God. Do not join in gossips concerning him. I have since decided, when I became a Christian and knew, I said to myself, I will not join Pastor Mosgo. No matter what any pastor under me, with me, that have come to Pastor me does, I will distance myself from him if I cannot work with him. But the pastor must go, I won't join. The person that brought him there, I will take him when he wants him. That may not sound good to you, the activist. But if a man of God had been brought to you, I believe that God brought him my way. And if that God becomes tired with what he's doing, he will remove himself. That CSU will join a group that says, pastor must go, it's not me. So must honor this man of God because he's sent by God. The Bible says no one take this honor by himself. Honor him. Believe in him. Believe in his God-given abilities. If you must benefit from his ministry. I've been speaking to you, believing you are a child of God. I also want to believe that all this period you have seen pastors. I have seen many. I have seen many. Both in the church I belong to and in the fellowship. I belong to. I have seen people the Lord has put above me. I have benefited immensely from many. But I can tell you that there are some I didn't benefit as much as I am benefiting from others. Reason being that I didn't quite believe in his ministry. Do yourself a favor like I have done myself a favor. Learn how to believe in the ministry of the under shepherd sent to you. Learn how to honor him. Do not join in gossip about him. Believe in his God-given ability and Believe him as a child of God and you will prosper under his ministry. But that is for you that's a child of God. For you that has not become born again, the first step, if you must join the family I'm talking about, I'm talking about the family of God, people whose God is their father. 
you need to give your life to Jesus and be born into the family of God. And thereafter, you join. Then you have a shepherd, or under shepherd, if, if you like, whom the Lord will send your way. And he will bless you. He will minister to you. And you will receive from him because you believe in his ministry. Put your right hand on your chest if you want to give your life to Jesus at this point in time. It takes very simple confession by the testimony of our word. We become born again. Now take your first one minute and say to God, I'm sorry for having lived my life the way I have lived. I've lived my life not knowing that you are there. I haven't lived my life according to the dictates of the Bible. But today I come repentant. Forgive my sins. Forgive them, blot them away that I may not have them again. Give me the strength to live for you hereafter. That's the prayer I want you to pray. If you have made that prayer with me, I want to pray with you now. And after that, please check the screen. Our social media handles are waiting there. Copy them, call us, write us. In any way, we are ready to hear you. Can we pray now? Father, behold my friends, I have shared as led this morning concerning what we must do with the man of God that is sent our way. Thank you because henceforth we will change and we will start benefiting from the men of God you send our way. That we will not waste our time going to church and going to programs without knowing what has hindered us from benefiting. Once more, I give you glory and give you honor. On behalf of these ones and all of us, thank you. If your son tarries next Sunday, we shall also come again and preach the word from the stables of Brush Radio. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, congratulations. You can afford to tell anybody that cares to hear that you're born again and that you are now in the family of God and God has become your father. There's no better privilege than that. God bless you for doing that and making heaven happy. Thank you.